So you've done a lot of reporting over the years on uh, Milken, Great Peace, 2016, 2017, yeah, well ago. Well ago. oral history. For those who don't know, what were the basics of the criminal, uh, the, uh, the conviction of Michael Milken? Right. Well, first of all, if you're watching this and you don't know about Michael Milken or Drexel or sort of insider trading in general in the 80s, I highly recommend you go find out about it, N not just because it's an important part of Wall Street, but because it's awesome. I mean, it's a really funny, amazing, vivid story. Yeah. There's, I mean, in a way, there's kind of no one in the history of financial markets more interesting than Michael Milken. I mean, I mean he created a financial market, essentially. He, junk bonds would yeah. not exist. I mean, Milken would not like us using the phrase junk bonds, uh, but junk well, bonds would not exist yeah. without Milken. No one really typifies sort of 80s financial success. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I mean, unless yeah. it's Donald Trump, then Michael Milken. <laughs> and he crashed really hard. I mean, he was truly, truly disgraced. There aren't a lot of Wall Street, powerful Wall Street yeah. figures who, who end up going to prison. Milken, I, I think he did tw tw more than he 20 did, months. He did 22 months. He did 22 but, months. But you talk about him crashing. I mean, we, we, I mean, for those of us who are old enough to remember, he had that X desk, that famous X desk out in That's Beverly right. Hills, Drexel Burnham Lambert. I mean, for some people who were coming up, they sort of idolized him as a financier. Obviously, he got caught up uh, with the securities fraud investigation, Ivan Boesky. Ivan but, Boesky. But even with his conviction, even with uh, the tarnish on his reputation, what he created did last, right? Well, uh, like as, as I said, I mean, Wall Street would literally look different if it yeah. weren't for this guy um, yeah. because, of, because of the junk bond market, the way yeah. that companies raise money. Um, on the other hand, I think that he also influenced something else that's kind of worth talking about, which is sort of this mentality as like a fictionalized version of Milken said in the movie Wall Street that greed is good. I think that Milken really typifies a certain kind of, um, you know, master of the universe type yeah. in, in on Wall right. Street and then in philanthropy on the other side. That there, there, it doesn't really, there isn't anyone who touches that kind of power and influence. Let's talk about the philanthropy and influence side because even before today, Milken's uh, reputation has long been rehabilitated, and every year lots of people go to a big conference out in Beverly Hills that he, the Milken Conference. How did that work? How did he reestablish himself long before there was any sort of like legal uh, clearing? With the answer that I think you know that you, you know what it is, money. I mean, this this guy has spent a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, cancer research, I think, primarily, and his. His image inside of Wall Street, I mean, to say it's rehabilitated wouldn't really quite cover it because Wall Street executives love Michael Milken. Yeah. Uh, I mean, first of all, I hope people tune into their terminals and on Bloomberg.com because I'm going to have, I, I hope, a fun story pretty soon about the response. But there is a sense that not only is Michael Milken not a bad guy, right. but there's a sense among Wall Street executives that he's kind of a hero and that he was a victim, as David Bonson put it in his right. letter to the White House in 2017, a victim of, an, of, of class envy run amok. I mean, he's mm. really th this wow. sort of lightning, lightning rod, rod figure. And we should point out, there have been uh, a lot of attempts to get him a pardon that, that predated Trump uh, that, from through the previous administrations, a lot of sort of Wall Street folks writing on his behalf. But for the general public, I think it's interesting, because there is a generational gap here, that people of a certain generation kind of only know him as a philanthropist. I mean, he taught, he, you mentioned the Milken Conference. I, I mean, for years, that conference had a, a relatively bad reputation. I mean, it was once referred to as the Predator's Ball because of uh, sort of the way that it was run. That's right. And a, now a it's kind of this benevolent association that does all these great things. I hope people read yeah. uh, the oral history that I co-wrote with a colleague yeah. named David and, and Jason Kelly, but also they should read The Predator's Ball because that's, that's a good book. Look, this man typifies philanthropy, but but yeah. also in, in some in some minds, Wall Street criminality, but in also some, some minds, um, you know, neither of those two things. So in addition to Milken, uh, Trump also uh, pardoning like Rod Blagojevich today. Blagojevich. Bernard Carrick. Do we know anything, though, about was there any, uh, at this point, specific efforts to Trump, or is it it's just like these are people that were sort of like, probably you know, sort of I don't know Trump's well, orbit. Where in, in his mind we're deserving of a uh, the, pardon. the Blagojevich pardon. I think is going to take most of the spotlight be, because of course he, he he was in prison because of political corruption right. and also he was literally on Trump's television show. Right, he was on he was on The Apprentice. I believe he was kicked out in an episode that has to do with Harry Potter. But I, I bringing hope... The, uh, okay. Bringing the, yeah. the, the deep facts important. here. I really, really hope, though, <laughs> that the Blagojevich, um, c c uh, the commuting of a sentence, doesn't take attention away from Milken, because Milken, not only of how interesting Milken was in the 80s, but, but also the, the last year, the White House put out a list yeah. 
of all the people who, who all, all the Wall Street executives who, who had backed uh, the effort to, 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 to get this pardon for Milken. I mean, it's a joke. It's such, the, the names are so powerful. It's billions and billions of dollars. You got Sheldon Adelson and his wife. You got Richie LaFrac. You've got Stephen Roth. You've got wow. Murdoch. You've got David Rubenstein. I mean, it really, uh, it gives you a small, small taste yeah. of just how influential he, he was in the yeah. 80s and he right. remains today.